Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. Today is so exciting. This is the final video in a series of three parts to complete this dot mandala painting. We've covered tools, we've covered paints, and we've even made a PDF dotting pattern that you can download and print at home so that you can practice all these complex shapes and uh, you can just paint that right up and frame it. This has been such a fun video series and of all three videos, this is my favorite. So I look forward to completing it with you. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna get our applicator bottle filled with that Deco Art Premium Paint. This is Cerulean Blue. Just add the nozzle tip and I want a, a wide gauge because I'm going to make pretty large shapes. And this is going to be a new shape. It's going to be kind of a Fleur de Lis shape. So you pull down a small section of that dot and then as you extend that tail shape out, you apply slight pressure to that applicator bottle so that it allows a little bit of paint to come out as you extend the shape. Now I'm going to change the color and move on to that bronze color with a smaller gauge tip and I'm going to make a smaller drop shape. And now to finish I just grab that blue bottle again and do two little swoosh shapes on either side and then two little dots to fill that empty space. So here you can see it up close and you could absolutely do this shape by using stylus tools, but the applicator bottles do make this so much easier. Um, but like I said, this entire design, you could use stylus tools and rods with the liquid paint and be just fine. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same exact thing with red uh, in every other section and just do that same pattern, only in a different color scheme. So which nozzle tip do you use for what size dot? Well, what you're gonna find is you want to use the smaller gauges for more, you know, obviously for smaller dots. And you'll find very quickly if you're trying to make a shape and not enough paint is coming out fast enough, you just need to use a size larger so um, it's really just trial and error. Um, one thing you really want to make sure that you do is keep everything nice and clean. There is a way to clean nozzle tips when they are absolutely dried and funky, and I'll show you that a little later in the video. There's a trick for that. So right here what I'm doing is mixing a little bit of white into my yellow. You can mix in the applicator bottle and I just squeeze it up just to make sure the tint is right and uh, then you can use it straight on because I like to um, add lighter dots on top but just check that out. So that's an example of a flat dot with a puffy dot on top which I like the contrast of it. I think, um, I think that's a good way to go rather than having two puffy dots on top of each other that might be a little bit too much puff. And then for these drop shapes check out how easy it is to apply that with those nozzles. It's like it's it's so much easier. Um, yeah this is a really enjoyable part of the painting.
So I added white to that blue paint, and now I'm gonna add blue top dots in a lighter shade just on top of all of those blue dots. Now, a fun thing that I haven't really tried that I'm gonna try next time is not fully mixing the paint in the bottle so that you have kind of a swirl going on because when you make um, when you make those big dots, the if your paint isn't fully mixed and you can kind of see that some of those light blue dots are like that, but imagine if you had like yellow and red paint or black and white paint or two very opposite um, colors. And so they kind of come out. So you can kind of see it here where it's not 100% mixed, the light blue and the dark blue. And that kind of looks cool. And I think you could really accentuate that and make little marbleized dots. So I'm gonna have to make a note for next time because I think that'll be a fun thing to, to experiment with. Wow, that was a really good idea. Don't any of you beat me to it. I want to try it. But if I'm just kidding. You can beat me to it. I love that you guys like to mess around with paint like I do. And if you do beat me to it and you try it, tag me because I want to see it. I love what you guys make. So here's a good example of using one of those super tiny gauge tips. Um, you can see it still comes out 3D and plumpy, and it's look at the same size dot using a stylus. So um, the size of the dot is it's really interesting. You can get super, super tiny dots all the way up to incredibly large ones. So there's really nothing you can't do with these applicator bottles. But, however, if you're not into puffy dots, skip it altogether. You could do this entire design just with stylus tools and rods. And that's one of the things that I should have mentioned in the beginning of the video. Um, really, this design is up, up for interpretation. You can do this um, exactly dot for dot, or you can mix it up and do it with your tools that you have and your colors, um, certain sections. If you wanna redesign it, go for it. And you can also sell it. So basically any design that you see from the dotting center, you can absolutely copy, redesign, and sell. I give you full permission to do this. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, I made a decision a long time ago I was going to share my artwork, so that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, are you starting to like the sound effects? I kind of think you are. Okay, so this is going to be like little jewels hanging from those drop shapes. I wonder if there is a gel paint that's translucent. Wouldn't that be cool? Or like a pearl paint? I gotta check and see what I can use um, in these tips. Cause yeah, wouldn't a like transparent gel or like a iridescent gel be cool? Like a little drop jewel. So what do you all think? Do you know what I'm talking about here? What about like a, um, a gel medium with some kind of iridescent powder mixed in? Oh, if you have any suggestions for uh, a, an interesting translucent paint, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to try some.
think that would be cool. So look at the range of dot sizes you can get from this one tip. Um, super big and fat down to teeny tiny. So here's a little mini movie on how to clean dried acrylic paint out of your nozzle tips. And I'm sure you won't have this problem, you'll probably clean your nozzle tips after every use, but if you don't and they get dry, don't worry, there's a way to fix it. You just put it in a little uh, container of rubbing alcohol and that loosens everything up and you can use um, sewing pins to actually uh, like stick through some of those nozzle tips. Oh, bless you. And uh, then what you do is you take some rubbing alcohol, goodness, bless you, bless you. And then you put it in there, you shake it up, you squeeze it out and get all the grenadies out. And uh, yeah, it's all good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add coral to those ray forms coming out. Just make an extra long drop shape with my stylus tool. Now we're done using the compass, so we can add a top dot in the center. And from this point forward, we're just gonna be adding top dots and uh, just different colors on top of the already existing shapes. The whole design has been laid out, and now we're just finishing everything. So here I am almost done with the painting when, no joke, I just remembered that I had a lazy Susan the entire time. Um, which would have probably made this video a little smoother, um, but I figured why, why not, just let's do it now. So, boy, isn't that so much more enjoyable? Uh, sorry about that. Next time. Next time I will remember. Uh, yeah. Just so smooth. See how smooth that is? Now it would have been really smooth if I had just done that from the start. That would have been a really smooth move. I do apologize for that. That was uh, potty humor and it was unbecoming of a lady so uh but that's what happens when you get to uh the third video in an epic uh one hour journey into a painting this is the kind of voiceovers that you get and it's i can't help that but thank you for sticking with me this is awesome if you're still here wow it's been a journey i appreciate it Okay, so here we are at the very end of the painting. Right now, most of these dots are dry and you can see how much uh, lift they have. I'm really happy with the plumpiness of my dots. And now we're gonna wipe off with just a wet towel all of the chalk lines. Of course, everything is dry. This is overnight, it's dried. You have to make sure that you give enough dry time for um, thick dots because, whoa, okay because um, that's a lot of paint and you need to make sure that everything dries really, really well. Okay, so now I'm gonna lift it up and show you the depth of these dots. Hopefully you can see how they dried. They dried nice and textured. So next step, this is a nice finishing touch. I got these Arteza um, paint pens and there's my favorite is the gold and this is an awesome way to add paint to the edge of your um, painting boards you can just draw it along the edge just like this and it just has a really classy finishing touch right before you add varnish and um, yeah I like 
I like this. And it's very easy and it's shiny too. It's a nice shiny paint. Okay, so now we are outside. Everything is 100% painted and clean and the edges have been finished with that marker so I have a nice gold edge. And now we're going to take some clear varnish and finish it up, add a nice high gloss to it. So now I'm trying this Deco Art Americana Triple Thick Gloss Glaze. Um, they sent this to me because um, I wanted to try a different varnish. I was using now you don't want to use resin on something like this first because that's going to ruin all of the um, plumpy dots. It's just going to settle all around your dots and, and not give you the texture that you want. So you want to use a nice thin coat of varnish so that you can still see all of those um, dimension, all the dimension in the dots that you did. So you give it a spray, you let it dry for three minutes, and then you can come back and add a second coat just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. And there you go. It's all done. So hey, wasn't that fun? I really loved making this video and this painting, and I really hope that you guys liked it too. And if you did, go ahead and exercise your right to vote by clicking the like button. And uh, yeah, I, I hope you subscribe because I'm working on something super serious. And I think I'm gonna go with something a little more classy, refined, understated, and monochromatic. Maybe then I'll be considered a serious dotting artist. Yeah, probably not. But anyway, clearly I hate to have fun with art and I hope you're the same way. And if you are, Please subscribe to my channel because I have way more videos on the way. So thanks again for watching and until next time.